Hey, everybody, and welcome to another series webinar from the 2023-2024 Life Sciences Dream In webinar series, where we are bringing you the most interesting and exciting innovations and approaches that exist at the intersection of life sciences and salesforce.com. We joined together last year in a two-day conference in August, which was wonderful and spectacular. I want to thank all of our sponsors before I introduce you to Eric Dreshfield, who's going to help you get into the meat of what we are presenting today. So the 2023 Life Sciences Dreamin' Inaugural Life Sciences Dreamin' Series was brought to you by a, a lot of sponsors who are interested in helping you work better and smarter, including Cloud Adoption Solutions, S-Docs, Elements Cloud, Capstorm, Customer Times, Recipe Pro, Mind Matrix, Easy Protect by Adaptus, Salesforce, Steady State Media, Fido SEO and Wise Wolves. Thank you to everybody who joined us in bringing all of this interesting and exciting innovation to the forefront last year. We are days away from giving you information on the 2024 Life Sciences Dream in two day conference. We went for a site visit last week, and I got to tell you, it is going to be spectacular. If you thought we had fun last year, you better get your dancing shoes ready because this year is going to make your feet hurt in a good way. Liv is going to share at the end or throughout the link for you to get on the wait list so you can make sure you get in there because we know this year's um, edition of Life Sciences Dream in is going to be a sellout. I'll also share with you information on how you can, by staying to the end, get yourself a life sciences salesforce sticker pack so hang in there and be ready for a fun ride today of course please put your questions in the q a this is a live webinar so we will be answering them throughout i am so excited to introduce you to my friend and yours eric dreshfield because i believe this man has never met a stranger eric <laughs> is an mvp and when i tell you he is the godfather of the salesforce community i really mean that eric has instituted things that have just caught on fire and 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 blown throughout. He invented the idea of the community conference with Midwest Dreamin. He has been really insurmountable in his experience, and he is so helpful at helping everybody understand how to bring dreams to life, which is how life sciences dream and got here. So Eric, I will thank you again publicly, and I welcome you to the stage to um, bring on our friend Paul Burt. Awesome. Thank you, Shannon. Well, that's, that's probably one of the best intros I've had. Uh, pretty exciting stuff. Uh, so thanks for that. And I'm going to steal the stage for 30 seconds and give you all a sneak preview to something else that I am ready to launch uh, very, very soon. In fact, the website is actually live. Uh, if you go to dreaminindata.com, you'll discover a new event, a new Salesforce community event that I'm launching later this year that'll take place in November. Uh, so with that said, uh, let's move on to today's experience. Uh, you don't want to hear me talk. You want to hear Paul Burt talk. Paul has been with SDocs for close to eight years now, uh, started in uh, a role in as a support engineer and grew up through the ranks at the company, moving through an account executive position up to a solutions engineer. And now today he is the director of solution engineering or solution architecture, excuse me, at SDocs. And Paul, I'm going to let you uh, tell everybody in the audience today what SDocs is all about and take things on forward. So take it away, Paul. All right. Thank you, Eric. And hi there, everyone. Thank you for joining today's session on how you can accelerate life-saving innovation with the combination of document automation and Salesforce Experience Cloud. As Eric just mentioned, my name is Paul Burt. I've been with SDocs for many years in a variety of roles, and I'm really here today to talk to you about how SDocs can help solve a primary challenge that life sciences organizations face today and will only face increasingly in the future. Now, there are a variety of evolving challenges, of course, that every organization faces, but particularly life sciences organizations. Now, since the uh, pandemic a couple of years ago, it really changed the way that these organizations work, especially with regards to digital experiences. Now, one of the biggest uh, challenges that I think all organizations are facing today are, of course, economic headwinds. 
That results in major staffing concerns. And one quote that we pulled from a Randstat 2023 talent trends report is that one third of C-suite and human capital leaders in life sciences and pharma say that talent scarcity is a major pain point. So the combination of economic headwinds, staffing concerns, and remaining competitive in a hyper-competitive environment results in a unique set of challenges. Some of these challenges include employees having to spend far too much time on manual processes. In a world where automation and AI are all the rage and currently available, they are really not being leveraged even close to the small extent that they can achieve today. Things like AI are junior technologies, but can still make a large impact on making uh, things more efficient and eliminating manual processes. Now, another challenge that is faced is that information is highly siloed. This can be a consequence of not digitizing yet. It could be a consequence of digitizing with the wrong approach. But regardless, information is siloed. And despite the fact that we have these centralized CRM and digital systems that contain all of the important information, there are barriers that prevent, for instance, someone in legal from collaborating with someone in sales or you know, vice versa, any combination of teams. There are lots of, uh, there's lots Lots of digital red tape that's in place preventing collaboration in an efficient manner. Now, finally, resources are more dispersed than ever. I am joining you live from Cambridge, Massachusetts, from the comfort of my own home, and that increasingly is more and more of a trend, right? People are distributed across the country, across the globe, and we have to find a way to improve efficiency, despite the fact that people primarily no longer work in the same building as one another. So some of these challenges are leading to a primary set of focuses or top priorities that life science leaders have chosen to focus on. Now, first of all, obviously, creating efficiencies and reducing costs is one of these primary focuses. Improving customer trust and satisfaction is something that's really top of mind for many, I think, of the best organizations. How do we improve the customer's trust by giving them the best possible experience that we can muster? And finally, in general, improving business functions. Now, this is something that's as old as the business itself, right? How do we take what we do and make it more effective? So because of these primary challenges that people are facing, we have seen a major uptick in efforts to digitize. But one thing that people typically overlook when they are considering digitization is a problem as old as business itself, the paperwork problem. As you all know, life sciences organizations face a monumental documentation workload. Documentation is required for capturing consent, for documenting trials, for really every area of your business. Paperwork is something that I think of as almost a byproduct of a business uh, performing its day-to-day -day action. For almost anything that you do, especially within the life sciences industry, there's an associated piece of paper or 10 that must be produced. Now, document crea creation processes are typically very manual, complex, and difficult to scale. It really is systemically driving a lot of the inefficiencies that we see today. Uh, digital transformation can certainly help, but only 44% of organizations have completed or are in the process of implementing digital solutions. Now, 44% is a pretty low number. That means that less than half of organizations have stepped through taking their old archaic processes and digitizing them into the modern world. Now, I like to look at things a bit more optimistically. I think that more than half of organizations have not begun the journey yet, which means means that when they do embark on the journey, they can do it right the first time around. Something that I have noticed within plenty of these organizations that fall within the 44% is that sometimes digitizing in the wrong way can create more inefficiency than not digitizing at all, right? So whether you're in the category of the 44% or the 56%, the great thing is that technology has come so far that even getting rid of these old archaic systems or digitizing a system that has never been digitized really could not be easier than it is today. 
Now, moving on here, some of those issues with manual paperwork are listed out here. Organizations without document automation really put themselves at risk in many ways. Now, the first source of risk, of course, is human error that can lead to many different concerns. The biggest type of concern that jumps out to me is compliance concerns. If there's a required piece of documentation that must be produced and someone simply forgets to do it, that can manifest in terms of fines that an organization might pay, or if nothing else, a degradation of the customer's experience. Sometimes your customer relies on you to get them a piece of paper on time and accurately. Human error can certainly degrade that uh, customer's experience. Now, another organizational inefficiency or uh, yeah, inefficiency is that there is excessive time spent on creating and formatting documents, which leads to very slow projects and slow innovation. Now, if you think about the uh, legal process, very often documents will get bogged down in series of red lines that all occur inside of a Microsoft Word file. That Word file might be emailed all around the horn from one legal team to the next using track changes to capture all of the proposed changes to a document. Now, this is a highly inefficient system, and it slows down organizations tremendously. So again, just spending time on simply making sure that a table is aligned correctly or a logo looks good enough can slow down a process that is already bogged down to begin with. Now, the next thing is slow document delivery and incorrect formatting that's outside of the brand guidelines lead to a poor customer experience. You can imagine if we were to send someone a highly formatted proposal that looks really good with graphs, images, and high-level formatting, that proposal is probably going to win business nine times out of ten compared to a boring, drab document that doesn't have any eye feel or eye catchiness to it. So again, just simply making sure that your documents are accurate and look good to begin with can solve this problem altogether or at least not impact the customer's experience in a negative way. So overall, manual paperwork or suboptimal paperwork processes hinder your innovation and put you at risk. Now, organizations with document automation are operating efficiently and can accelerate innovation and spend their time on the most valuable tasks and priorities. Now, if you were to pull anyone in this room, I doubt that producing paperwork would be what gets them out of bed in the morning and has them show up to work, right? Typically, you are engaged by something other than paperwork. So an automation solution is going to allow you to focus on what it is that really gets you out of bed in the morning and eliminate the cognitive burden of having to produce documents all day long. So with the current trends in the life sciences industry, document automation can clearly be vital to success. And that's why I'm here to talk to you today a bit about SDOCs. Now, what is SDOCs? SDOCs is a document automation and e-signature solution for Salesforce that allows life sciences companies to implement document creation, form collection, doc management, and most importantly, delivery into any process that is powered by Salesforce. On screen are a few of the real life use cases, things like collecting clinical trial documentation, regulatory submissions, and so on and so forth. Now, if you're a Salesforce uh, whiz, you might be familiar with things like Experience Cloud, flows, triggers, and so on. SDocs is going to be across the board compatible with anything and everything that you might do in Salesforce because we are a 100% native application. That means that we can be tied into any of those existing processes that you might have today, or you can easily integrate us into brand new processes. Now, again, some of those core use cases are here, but I like to think about things a bit more broadly. Anytime four corners of a document are involved that need to have some automatically merged content or e-signature captured, SDocs becomes a great candidate for you. Now, data and security is one of the biggest things, uh, biggest challenges that is faced by life sciences organizations. Now, you might be familiar with other tools that do the same thing that we do, right? Electronic signature and document generation is quite a saturated space. But despite the amount of competition or uh, other solutions that exist, 
SDocs is the only one that is native to Salesforce. Now, what does that really mean? With other solutions, your data, of course, begins inside of Salesforce on their secure platform. But when it comes time to generate a document, that data has to leave the secure walls of Salesforce for processing on an external system. Now, this arrow here might look innocuous, but it, what it really represents, especially for life sciences organizations, is the data that you're trusted to be in custody of leaving the secure system where it should live. Now, the data has to process externally, the documents are produced, and eventually round-tripped back into Salesforce. Now, technically, this process works, but obviously it is prone to plenty of risk and is outright uncompliant in markets where data residency is important. Oftentimes, customers based out of the UK, for instance, cannot guarantee that another solution's document generation server will be in the UK. Oftentimes, they're based in the US, Australia, or somewhere that does not fall within compliance given their data residency laws. Now, with SDOCs, things are dramatically different. With our solution, no matter what you're doing, if you're sending out batches of emails, if you're producing contracts that are hundreds of pages long, if you're collecting e-signature on an iPad in the field, no matter what you do with our tool, everything is going to remain securely within the Salesforce platform. That means that at no point does your data leave the system. At no point is it processed externally. Everything happens where the data already resides, resulting in, of course, the most, most secure experience possible. Now, there are some other benefits to this architecture as well. SDocs is going to be one of the fastest solutions that you will observe when it comes to DocGen and eSignature. That is because we are tapping into the power of the Salesforce platform. Salesforce, as we all know, inherently has a lot of power and a lot of things that you can do with it. SDocs simply leverages that power and allows you to tap into the platform that you already pay for today. Now, some of the key other uh, benefits of being native to Salesforce, I've already alluded to, but again, integration capabilities, whether you use things like Salesforce, you know, Lightning, Experience Cloud, Translation Workbench, Shield Encryption, and so on, SDocs is going to be able to plug directly in. So today, what we're really going to focus on specifically is document automation for Experience Cloud. If you're unfamiliar, Experience Cloud is essentially the Salesforce technology that allows you to set up a portal. This portal might be used by your end customers. It might be used by your uh, partners. It could be used by people like resellers or really anyone who needs to have persistent access to a place where they can generate documents, where they can view information or really engage with you through uh, Salesforce's CRM. Now, this has many applications for life sciences organizations, some of them listed here like clinical trial management, customer self-service, and so on. Uh, Sorry, I lost my place in my notes here. But, uh, you know, one thing that we wanted to point out is that 91% of organizations, of course, are investing in R&D. 76% of life sciences organizations are investing in solutions to improve the self-service experience. So, in other words, the data seems to show that moving towards a portal-based solution is something that will be happening, if not today, very soon. So moving on, what we're going to cover today is an example of what document automation and uh, Experience Cloud look like in conjunction. Now, this is a customer use case that, of course, is anonymized, but came from a federal health agency. Their original challenge is that they needed to process applications for various uh, well, applications. It, before document automation, these applications were manually processed into the database. What does manually processed mean? That means that documents were physically printed out. They were mailed to recipients. The recipient had to open the envelope, find a pen, sign the document, and mail it back. Best case scenario, the process was facilitated by fax machines instead of snail mail. But however you slice it, it was an extremely slow and inefficient process. Imagine the scenario that we send a document for signature and the recipient tells us, hey, you spelled my middle name wrong, 
or my birthday's off by one date. Well, of course, we would have to reissue the document, put it back in the mail, and wait another three to five business days before the customer might even receive it. So obviously, there's only so much productivity that you can achieve with a system like that, and there's lots of risk of error. Now, the solution for this old archaic paper application process was to process applications through an experienced cloud portal. This allows someone to simply log into a website, submit any information that might be relevant, and right then and there, sign a document. This transformed the turnaround time from an average of more than 10 days down to an average of a couple of hours. Now, of course, there's always the one or two stragglers who ignore that email in their inbox, but that's a lot easier than waiting for them to receive the document in the mail. So let's go ahead and take a look at what this could look like. Now, this is a Salesforce Experience Cloud site. It is certainly made generic. This isn't the customer's live instance, but it's meant to represent what it is their customers are doing. Now, the specific area we will focus on here is this section down below. The first thing that our applicant will do when they access this Experience Cloud site is pro uh, provide some baseline information. So they can type in things like their name and email. And uh, let me just make sure that I'm putting in a uh, good name here. Bear with me. I just have to make sure that I don't have any uh, duplicates here. So we'll go with a variation of my name, Paul Albertson. <laughs> now, the other thing we will do is we will provide our street information and the city and so on. And I will actually just sort of zoom through the rest of this. And now that our baseline information is provided, which actually, before I click next, I might just... Um, say that in the customer's real life experience, this is a much more sophisticated interview than simply asking for my name, my email, and so on. They are gathering, I believe, hundreds of points of data before a document is ever even signed. So instead of sending them a paper form that has to be filled out by pen and paper, you know, we can collect a whole boatload of information in a series of just a couple of screens. So now that I have filled in this baseline information, I can click Next. And behind the scenes, this is where SDocs comes into play. Now, SDocs is going to take the information that was input by our customer, and it's going to generate a document using the information. In today's example, we use just a generic document, but again, keep in mind that this can be any type of document that is important to your business. We have customers who generate certificates, quotes, contracts, invoices, letters, and again, really any type of document that contains four corners and Salesforce data. But in this case, the document is now ready to be signed. Before I go too far, I do want to mention that in this example, we are focusing on Experience Cloud. But keep in mind that that is just one of the ways that S-Sign can be leveraged. S-Sign can also email the link to the customer if you want to capture the signature remotely. S-Sign is typically or is often used with the in-person use case as well. So the example that I like to think of there is home health care. If someone is traveling to an individual's house to provide some health care, they typically have to uh, capture consent on a form before they perform any action. So S-Sign allows you to generate a document on your device, hand that device over to the customer, capture their signature then and there, and go about your business. So again, what you see here is just one of the mechanisms to surface the document to our signer. But I digress. Now that this is ready, let's go ahead and click the link. In today's example, simply for convenience, two-factor authentication is disabled. But keep in mind that S-Sign, of course, supports the ability to make this process as secure as possible. Two-factor authentication works by sending the customer a PIN code that basically acts as the document's password. You must enter it in order to proceed. Now, the next thing that we have to do is for compliance purposes. We have to consent to doing business electronically. Before I click continue, however, I will point out that every element of this screen is customizable. First and foremost, if you need to change the verbiage, you can absolutely do so. Whether it's translating it to another language or simply customizing the way that it reads from a legal perspective, you have complete control here. 
Now, if you are managing a global implementation of Salesforce, this landing page can be made dynamic so that, for instance, if a Dutch customer accesses it, this verbiage is in Dutch. But if a German customer accesses it instead, of course, it's in German. Now, the other thing I will mention is that this S sign logo can be replaced with your own logo to make this feel as familiar and legitimate as possible to your patients or customers. But regardless, now we can click Agree and Continue, and this will take us to the actual document that needs to be signed. Now, in this example, it's really just a placeholder sort of sample document, but the most important thing to focus on is that down below, we are collecting a total of five inputs from this customer. With that sign, you can scale this concept up or down freely. So some of our customers use S sign just to collect a signature and that's it. Other customers take this concept and scale it up to capture dozens, or in some cases, even hundreds of data points directly inside of the application, using S sign as basically more of a form collection tool than an e-signature tool. But in this case, we can get started. Now, the first field is a text field that is prompting us to input our title. But instead of putting my title in there today, I will put a very specific phrase in the field. Keep this in mind because you're going to see this reappear directly in the record in just a few minutes. But moving on, the next thing that we have here are a couple of date fields. The date can be chosen manually by the user, or it can be auto-stamped using today's date and uneditable. Something that I might call out is that, of course, you have control over this date formatting in case the US default is undesirable to you. S-Sign supports a variety of other fields like checkboxes, drop-down pick lists, initials, and more, but most importantly is the signature itself. Earlier, I mentioned that S-Sign is mobile ready. If we were on a phone or a tablet, we could simply draw our signature using our touch screen. There's no extra work that you have to do to make S-Sign mobile ready. It's out of the box. Now, since I'm on a mouse and keyboard today, I will actually just type my name in and you'll see that it produces something nice and formatted for me. You do have the ability to control exactly which font is used here so that it looks, you know, uh, as good as possible. Now we can click apply here, and that's all that we have to do for this example. But before I click submit, I will reiterate one point. S sign in this example is only capturing signature from a single person, but you can scale this concept up as well, capturing data from two, five, or more than 10 people if needed. Now, one part that I sort of skipped over, but I'm realizing I really should call out is sort of the core competency of SDocs, our document generation solution. If we take a look at the top of the document, you can see a whole series of data points that are automatically merged into the document itself. So down below, you saw the concept of capturing data, but if we simply need to display data, maybe this was the information collected in that flow that we saw earlier, you can do so, of course. Now, this example is relatively basic because we have a few things like the customer's name, the opportunity name, the address, and today's date. But just like the S sign fields, this can be scaled up so that you automatically merge as many fields as you need. SDocs is extremely flexible when it comes to retrieving Salesforce data. We can grab any type of field from anywhere in Salesforce. So even if you had something particularly convoluted, like a formula field from an unrelated record, that's no problem. As long as the data's inside of the Salesforce platform, SDocs has the flexibility to go and retrieve it. Now, we also have the ability to work with lists of records. In this context, it's showing us all of the products being purchased, but in a more specific to this webinar context, this could be a history of everyone's patient visits. It could be a list of all of the uh, pharmaceuticals that they are taking, or really any list of records that might need to be summarized in your case. Now, the way that this works is that SDocs will iterate through the records, whether there's one, or more than a thousand and retrieve a few key fields from each. In this example, just the product's name, description, etc. 
The most important thing about this feature is that it is a completely dynamic list. Whether we have one item to summarize, a hundred items, or a thousand, it doesn't make a difference. This is simply going to keep repeating until all of the crucial data is displayed. This example does show you that you can also introduce some more advanced concepts, in this case splitting each product into their respective families, subtotaling each group, and producing a grand total at the bottom. You also have the ability to filter these lists, sort them, and so on. And the very last thing that I will call out before I hit the submit button is the services section down below. This is an example of a conditional section within SDocs, or in other words, there is a rule programmed into our template that says only if the customer is purchasing service products, which you can see up above we are doing, will we include this clause. If we were not, this would be eliminated altogether. Now, this concept can be applied to a contract clause like you see here, but it can also be applied to any element of your document. If you need to support dynamic logos based on the line of business, this can be used. If you need to support dynamically translating a document to the customer's language, Conditional logic will come into play there as well. So again, any element of your document can have intelligence behind it regarding whether or not it's actually displayed. But I digress uh, at this point. Let's go ahead and click Submit. What it's going to do now is take the signed version of the document and attach it directly to our record. It also takes the signed copy and delivers it via email to the customer for their own records. Now, keep in mind, if your documents contain PII, you can disable sending the document via email so that we're not introducing risk. But finally, it's going to send a confirmation email to whoever created this request saying, hey, ABC person has finished XYZ document. And what I'm going to do now is toggle into, you know, core Salesforce itself. So moving away from the experience cloud for a second, just to show you evidence of everything that I just did. Now, first of all, the signed version of the document is going to be attached directly to the record. Uh, in this example, you can see, of course, all of the inputs that I specified. But more interestingly, you can see this thing called the audit trail. This contains all of the relevant compliance information surrounding our e-signature request. For instance, who signed the document, what was their email address, who filled out which fields, even down to the granular level of what's their IP address. This information is important if the validity of your digital agreements is ever called into question. Now, if you don't want this page physically appended to the contract, that's no problem. It can be turned off. But the underlying data itself is always stored, again, for your safekeeping into Salesforce. Now, the area where it stores is this thing called the S-Sign Envelope. I really like this entry because this is going to contain a variety of important data. Things like what type of document is being signed. Who is the person responsible for signing it? When was it created? And so on. But my favorite thing about this record is the status field, because this is going to give us a live look into exactly where the document is in its journey towards completion. This would automatically update to show us expired, completed, rejected, whatever it may be. But in this case, most importantly, you can see that our request has a status of completed. Now, visually, this will let us see that the contract is finished, but maybe more importantly, you can base Salesforce automation on this update. In my example today, I have delivered instantly a follow-up document that also requires signature. So instead of waiting for someone to print a document out, put it in the envelope, and mail it to our customer, the, uh, the follow-up documentation is in the inbox instantly when we click Submit. Now, the other thing that happened in this example is just moving the opportunity stage along. The instant that our contract is signed, moving the stage to closed one to denote, hey, we won this business. But no matter what update might need to be automatically undertaken, this field powers it all. Now, the last thing that I will point out for this use case is that example that I mentioned to keep in mind of the phrase. You'll see that this has landed directly in our opportunity record. This is an extremely simplified example of S-Sign's data write back capability. And this is useful because instead of having to open the contract, 
sift through it, and re-enter data that was input by the customer already, this really just cuts everything out of the process. The customer types in the data, they click submit, and it automatically transfers directly into the record. This is a simple example because it's just one field, but you can imagine capturing hundreds of fields that automatically write back. It saves a lot of time. And if you're curious, this is also something that can be subjected to validation rules. So for instance, if you're capturing a date of birth, a social security number, a credit card number, or anything that needs to have a specific format, that's just another area where SDOCs being native to Salesforce becomes important. We can tie directly into Salesforce data validation rules. But really, this concludes the quick use case that we wanted to step through to begin today. So just in summary, this federal health agency streamlines the process because instead of, you know, conducting a paper and pen process, they have digitized the process entirely. But the icing on the cake is the experience cloud that creates the truly self-service model so that nobody internally has to be tasked with generating and delivering documents. Even if we have document automation systems in place, automating it to the fullest extent makes sense, uh, especially in this case. Now, the next thing that we are going to talk about is actually another pharmaceutical company or, or a pharmaceutical company that does almost the exact same thing as the use case that I just covered, but they do it in a different flavor. Now, this pharmaceutical company uses SDOCs and Experience Cloud to streamline clinical trials. They, uh, in their process and any clinical trial process, really participants have to give consent. Now, this pharmaceutical company had the old process that I just described without the step of mailing. A clinical trial participant would come into the clinic, they would be handed the clipboard with the piece of paper, and that document would be signed on the spot. Now that works well enough, but let's think about what happens after the participant signs that document. Someone in-house is responsible for taking the document, looking through it to make sure that everything looks good, and if so, scanning it, uploading it, putting it into something like SharePoint, right? It's still a very manual process, even when we cut mailing out of the equation. So in this example, uh, the customer was able to replace that clipboard and piece of paper with an iPad containing an S-signed document. They hand the iPad over, the participant signs off, and things are ready to progress. With, and, you know, but most importantly, there's no one on the back end who has to intake this document. It's automated altogether. Now, I'm not going to show a demonstration for this because it is very similar to what we just covered. So actually, let's just move on to this next use case. This is coming from a health services innovation company. And in this case, uh, SDOCs is being leveraged to facilitate the self-service ordering process. This uh, company sells contact lenses and prescription glasses, but let's talk specifically about contact lenses. Now, what they were looking for is a way to digitally allow someone to access a portal, type in the information about what they needed to order, and have their receipt automatically delivered to them. They process a very high volume of orders. So even with document automation, it was very unrealistic for someone to click a button every time a receipt is needed. This is going to automate the process altogether so that just based on the order that the customer enters, SDOCs is going to automatically generate and send them the receipt. So let me come over to Salesforce and I can show you an example of what this looks like. Bear with me here. I realized that I accidentally closed it out. And I think that this one should do it. The beauty of a live demo here, this looks like this is not the right one that I was expecting. So we will bear with it and we will come back over here to this example. And what I'm going to show you is what it looks like for a document to be produced, right? So in the first example that we saw, it was a very interactive, very manual process. But in this example, the user hardly has to do anything. We will just click next and click this link and a document is going to be produced. Now I do have to apologize. This isn't going to be the receipt that I was alluding to earlier, but the concept holds true. Directly inside of the portal, the user can click a single thing and on demand have a dynamic document generated and served to them.
Now, the way that this is facilitated through this customer's real life use case is via Salesforce ScreenFlow. Now, I, want, I won't dive too far into the nitty gritty of ScreenFlow, but this is a really cool use case in my mind because it's really a just interactive portal. The person can click, I want six months of contact lenses, three months, one month. They can provide their insurance information and really anything that might need to be gathered in that initial ordering process. They simply click submit and the in, the instant that that order is received, they receive their confirmation document with the digital receipt attached. So document automation becomes extremely important to helping this organization scale. As I mentioned, they do such high volume that it would not be feasible for someone to manually produce this document, even given a digital automation solution. So this is just another area where SDOCs being native to Salesforce is vital. Because with other tools, to automate their solution is something that requires architects, developers, and oftentimes third-party consultants. But with SDOCs, we are native, so we can tie directly into a Salesforce flow. It is truly something that requires simply clicks and not code. And actually, I don't expect you to trust me on this front. I do see that I have a few extra minutes, so I'll quickly open up an example and show it to you. Now, keep in mind, the flow that I'm about to show you can be used to generate a quarter million documents every single day, but the beauty is it takes maybe 10 minutes to set up. Now, in this example, we are going to automatically generate and deliver a document the instant that this checkbox is selected. Keep in mind, this could be maybe a scheduled appointment date is coming up, a checkbox is collected, a status is reached, or a new order is received, right? Anything that is going to kick off a normal Salesforce flow can be used to kick off an SDOC specific flow. The important thing is that from our perspective, all you have to do is provide a few parameters and the entire process is automated. So instead of someone manually choosing, hey, I want to generate this contract using this record's data, this automates the process altogether. It becomes truly headless and allows you to generate documents in volumes that even a call center's worth of people would not be able to uh, keep up with. Now, the other thing I'll mention is that you can also perform downstream automation. So in my example, simply resetting the checkbox, but it could be updating a status, you know, creating a new record, or again, whatever automation might need to take place in your example. So at a high level, this is the kind of thing that a Salesforce admin can be up and running with in an hour, right? Whereas, like I said, automating other tools is the type of thing that requires a very sophisticated process. So coming back here, um, you know, the, really just to wrap things up, document automation contains some core um benefits for life sciences organizations. The biggest one in my mind is efficiency, right? You can find areas of your business where manual processes or even suboptimal automated processes are bogging down the system. So efficiency becomes very easy to solve for. Now, also equally important, really, the customer experience. People do expect to have a portal available. They expect to be able to self-serve and get what they need the instant that they need it. In order to keep up with your competition, you should be thinking of your customer's experience in the same exact way, right? How do we empower this customer, which really alleviates some of those staffing concerns that I started with today? Now, I won't step through each and every one of these, but cost savings, scalability, et cetera, I think you understand. Document automation has the capability to really revolutionize how life sciences organizations conduct their day-to-day -day business. But finally, uh, I will open it up for some questions here. So let me take a look at our chat and our Q&A. Okay, so I do see an interesting question here. So not being in life sciences, could you speak to why the industry is so far behind in on digital transformation? So, you know, this is something that I, I suppose this is just a hunch of mine. I, I can't say for sure that this is correct, but I find that certain types of organizations are very resistant to digital change. 
when I think of life sciences organizations, financial institutions, or, you know, really any business that has conducted their business a certain way for decades, if not longer, you know, I think that those are the ones that are particularly resistant to change. And putting it another way, uh, you know, businesses where something going wrong or some uh, system not operating correctly results in extremely tangible real world solutions, I find are the ones that are most resistant to change. Now, the other things like compliance that the healthcare and life sciences industry faces are really just barriers to innovation, right? You not only have to figure out how can we digitize this process, you have to figure out how can we digitize this process without within the bounds of compliance that we have to abide by. So, you know, just kind of a hunch of mine, but I, I think that's my stab at answering why health sciences are, are behind the curve, if you will, when it comes to digital automation. I would totally agree with that, Paul. You know, from my lifetime in the life sciences, I know that regulation plays around with everything, business operating systems, all the way through to deliverability. So completely agree. Great question. Thanks for asking it. And we do have another one for you that came in through the chat. In terms of scalability, how well does SDOCs adapt to the growing documentation needs of enterprises as they expand and diversify product portfolios? Oh, I love this one, Paul, because we see this is still a very hungry M&A um, industry, right? Life sciences is really focused on, you know, they're so acquisitive. So when you think about SDOCs and how it can play into that type of uh, fluctuating business operating systems like Salesforce, how does SDOCs adapt to that type of scalability? Yeah, that's a great question. So I think that one of our best features, if you will, one of the best qualities about SDOCs when it comes to scalability is the fact that you don't have to rely on a centralized technical IT team to create new things or update things in your existing SDOCs implementation. Now, more specifically, what I mean by that is if you have a new type of document that you want to automate, it's the kind of thing that in some cases, even a business user with a little bit of training can do themselves. So instead of having to submit a ticket to an already bogged down IT team, wait for the turnaround and see if they get it right on their first try. It really empowers the end employees or end users of the software, if you will, because they can recognize, hey, our team needs X, Y, Z. Let's just go build it ourselves. And even if that's an iterative process, you're able to iterate through it and get the perfect solution in a much faster time than it would take to wait on your IT team, at least in most of the organizations that I, I've you know, work with. Now, the other thing that I'll mention is that uh, with SDOCs, we do give a few concepts that really promote content recyclability. So something that I like to think of is, let's say that we have a hundred types of documents throughout our organization. Every one of those documents might have the exact same letterhead and the exact same footer. Now, instead of having to build that all out 100 different times, SDOCs supports a content library concept. So you can build a block of content and you can simply place that into any letter that might need our standard header, uh, sorry, letterhead, or footer. So that's just another area where, you know, a centralized team, if needed, can produce something that's very sophisticated and the end business users can mix and match those pieces of content together wherever they might need to leverage them. So just a couple examples, but I guess the last thing I'll end on with this question is when it comes to scalability, SDOCs is leveraging the power of the platform. So at least when it comes to computational scalability, Salesforce is ready to scale and you know SDOCs scales along with it. 250,000 documents every 24 hours is usually our upper threshold that we point to, which frankly, I don't really ever come close to scratching that surface. I think that would work out to almost 100 million documents a year. That's amazing. Uh, such a great question and a really good answer. Thank you, Paul, because I think folks in the life sciences are always thinking about how to choose something for the future, not just for today, because we've all seen these organizations shift. So we have time for one more question, Paul. I want to point everybody towards the chat where Liv put the form for you to enter to win your swag. We have one life sciences dream and swag bag we'll be giving away today, which is really cool. It's got a custom life sciences dream and beach towel and sunglasses and, um, 
We also have sticker packs to give away. And so she will announce that um, after Paul finishes answering this last question, which I think is a great segue from the last one, which is about implementation. So what is the process of adding document an existing document template to SDoc? So how do you format document templates? Because you know one of the things that I know we love about SDocs is the ease of use and the ease of administration. So this is a, a wonderful question for you. Absolutely. This is my favorite part of SDocs to show because this is really where you can see firsthand that it doesn't require a developer to build a document within SDocs. Our template builder is a point and click tool that lives directly inside of Salesforce. Instead of having to work with code, your business users can come in here and make updates in the same exact way that they would use, you know, with Microsoft Word or any other text editing tool. You have the ability to control things like the font type, size, coloration, and alignment. You can also insert those logos, pagination, and other things, again, using a very familiar toolbar. Now, even when it comes to embedding more advanced things like automatic fields or lists of records, even those rules that are built into the template, all of that good functionality is simply point and click. For instance, if I wanted to put the opportunity amount field after the word amount here, all I have to do is click insert field and it's going to automatically display to me a list of all of the candidates. You never have to synchronize this list or construct it manually. SDocs is able to simply read all of the fields that are available, including custom fields. Now I would just click amount, click insert, and that's literally all that it takes. We now have this tag that's going to go fetch some data and bring it into the document. So the short answer is it's a simple point and click tool that can be used by, again, anyone from a business user to a developer. <laughs> That is beautiful, Paul. Thank you so much for this wonderful presentation today. I know we love it so much for the life sciences and beyond because it's so flexible. I'm going to let Liv announce our winner, but one more time, thanks to Eric Dreshfield for introducing Paul and for helping us launch the inaugural 2023 Life Sciences Dreaming, which was brought to you by Cloud Adoption Solutions, SDocs, Elements Cloud, Capstorm, Customer Times, Recipe Pro, Mind Matrix, Easy Protect by Adaptus, Salesforce, Steady State Media, Fido SEO, and Wise Wolves. It was an incredible time. We hope to see you at the 2024 Life Sciences Dreamin', which is going to be in an amazing place that we'll tell you about soon. Liv, I know everybody is waiting with bated breath to know who's going to win the swag bag. Okay. Uh, so when I first saw this, I, I put in like a little random name selector. Uh, so when I first saw, I was like, yes, this is an easy name. But then I realized I know two people who say this totally different. So we either have it as Jana Jones or Jana Jones. And so if I, I messed up either of those, <laughs> let me know. Uh, but we will be sending your swag bag to you via mail. Fantastic. Congratulations, everybody. Thanks again for joining us today. We hope to see you next month where we've got another incredible webinar at the intersection of life sciences and Salesforce. Have a wonderful day.